it is my very great pleasure to announce this year's Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Mike Sheehan. One observation first is that um, having seen the media talent parade through this stage tonight, sports journalism is in very good hands and I'm not one of those who says that it won't be as good today as it was yesterday. I'm suitably honoured and humbled to be standing here in such illustrious company, particularly that I've got my two daughters Lizzie and Kate, my son Tony, and I promised you guys a mention, two of my grandchildren Frankie and Will here with me and two of my dearest friends from football, Richard and Susie Collis. Andrew Island is another special friend, but he's a member of the Sports Commission, so I shouldn't mention him for fear it would look like an inside job. <laughs> yes, this is a personal award, but it's also a significant acknowledgement of the status of the game I love, as I spent the best part of 40 years of my career focused exclusively on the AFL. I turn 75 years of age tomorrow, despite appearances. Hold the applause. Uh, <laughs> It is merely a quirk of fate rather than an achievement. I tell you that piece of trivia merely to explain the inevitable, inevitable switch in my thinking from planning for the future to reflecting on the past. The future is a day-to-day -day proposition, as you would tell by the way I scaled those stairs. The past is what it is. That's why I regard Lifetime Achievements Award as the most meaningful of accolades. They are proof of longevity, versatility and quality of work. While I'm not sure how good I was as a journalist, and that's not meant as mock humility, I survived the jungle of newspapers, radio and television in a big city, and I left all of them on my terms. Perhaps I was lucky, but I guess you can't be lucky for 55 years. I know it's a school day tomorrow, and I won't keep going all that long, but as I turn these pages. Of course I was lucky. I started in journalism as a callow youth of 16 years and 10 months, who went to work at the local paper in Werribee in Victoria for the school holidays after year 11. I stayed five years before my first taste of metropolitan journalism on a short-lived afternoon tabloid called Newsday, owned by The Age and dumped by The Age. I was blessed with a natural curiosity and I had an insatiable appetite for newspapers. And in terms of resources, that was about it. Werribee was a country town in those days, no more than three to 4,000 people, with a weekly broadsheet publication quaintly called The Banner. I had a boss who preferred to smell the roses rather than the printer's ink, and from 17, I wrote the stories, read the proofs, helped fold the papers, and then delivered them to the local newsagent. That's learning from top to bottom. I used to play in the Victorian Football Association, which was the second tier competition in the state, and would write lengthy match reports in The Banner. I wasn't good enough at football to write scathing reviews of my football team, but my natural inclinations got the better of me and I did. I would go to training on Thursday nights, see copies of the papers scattered around the rooms and wonder why I was greeted with so many scowls from teammates at some 10 years my senior. They were right and I was wrong, but it was proof that I was a journalist masquerading as a footballer. And that's true. My time in newspapers, the age in the 70s, the old afternoon Herald in the 80s, and then the Herald Sun for two decades, led to careers in radio and television with a crowning glory, a Fox program called Open Mic. I know we're in Sydney, but I hope some of you have seen it. It was an interview program that ran for 11 years and 230 episodes. It was the most fulfilling time of my working life. I picked the guests, wrote the questions, and conducted the interviews. It's hard to bitch about sub-editors and producers when it's a one-man show. I love that program and the gems and emotions it would uncover, but I sensed the enthusiasm from the station, which was Fox, was starting to wane in 2020, and I moved on before they moved me on. I had made it from 16 to 73 in the various arms of the media, and I think that's as good as innings as anyone could hope for. Journalism ultimately gave me a certain prominence in the football states of Australia, particularly Victoria. Gary Fenton, the Channel 7 Supreme of the day, introduced me to telly via talking footy. John Sorrell, the nine icon, had bowled up the idea of a TV role for me a couple of years earlier. 
I told him I had a good head for newspapers and radio. He said, quote, we want rough Irish heads. We'll get you some contact lenses to replace the glasses, send your suits back to the Brotherhood of St Lawrence, and get your boots with Cuban heels. I said, will I get to keep my name? I declined the invitation. Journalism took me to seven or eight countries on assignment, despite the fact that it's an Indigenous game, and enabled me to visit four continents and the events such as the Super Bowl, the World Cup, and the Test Series in both Australia and New Zealand. I know lots of people have got lists of people that uh, are famous worldwide for, as their interview subjects. My best are Kerry Packer, Greg Norman, Herb Elliott, and Sir Alex Ferguson. Oh, and the Ablets, Gary and Gary. Yes, I've been extremely lucky. If I could define my own legacy, it would be my campaign to have the authorities take the concussion issue more seriously. It started in 2002, when I wrote that it would be irresponsible and reckless of the authorities to allow Matthew Lloyd to play in a final for Essendon a week after he, after he was KO'd in a game. Lloyd wanted to play and Essendon planned to play him. Sanity prevailed after a week of, I think, searching articles and, and, and laying the responsibility to these authorities to be responsible with their players. There have been dozens of subsequent examples where I challenged the authorities to pay due respect to the long-term health of the brain. Sadly, most people link my newspaper career to the creation of the annual Top 50 player list. I take far more pride in my ability to find news stories and my role in the concussion debate. Um, right, this is the last turn of the page. <laughs> um, as I said at the outset, I, I'm really heartened by the, uh, the talent that I've seen here tonight and the talent that I read in the papers and see on the telly most times. I mean, there are exceptions, but I think it's in good health. Uh, and I want to thank the Australian Sports Commission for acknowledging my contribution to journalism. And yes, it's been a dream ride. Thank you. <laughs>